<laughs> Hi friends, Joe Pal Papa Dale here, once again pursuing studies about Christ versus culture. This is based on the scripture 1 John 2.15, which says, Love not the world, neither uh, the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. And uh, what basically that's saying is Christ needs to be the highest priority of your life. And uh, you should not hold anything uh, more highly important to you than Jesus Christ. And uh, so we're making videos to teach that and explore the different ways that culture tries to take the place of Christ in the life of Christians and how Christians should resist that. The purpose of this video is to teach and edify uh, people about uh, Christ and uh, also to leave a body of content that after the rapture of the church and the Christians are taken out, uh, there will still be people left behind that will be interested in what the Bible says. And um, so I hope that this is a body of content that the Holy Spirit will be able to use to teach them about the Bible. Well, who am I? I'm Papa Dale, and I'm a retired pastor, teacher, theologian, chaplain. I've done a lot of things in 50 plus years of service to the Lord Jesus Christ, chief cook and bottle washer, <laughs> and uh, janitor, and uh, lots of things. But um, uh, you can find out more about my history, my education, my Christian service, on a video that I created about myself, about my education and my my uh, Christian service, and uh, that is titled uh, Papa Dale Intro, video number zero on any of the Bible-related playlists. So uh, you should also want to know something about those people that are teaching the Bible to you, because Scripture says that in the end times, there are going to be many false teachers that will rise up. And uh, you want to be able to know a little bit about them. and But most importantly, you want to be able to compare what they teach with what the, crypt, the Scripture says. That's the most important thing. So, we're going to talk about a subject today that uh, the title of it is Jesus Claims Divinity. And uh, it's a very important subject. Very important subject. Because if Jesus is not God... You cannot be saved from your sins by his death on the cross. Uh, he wouldn't have been able to have been resurrected from the dead if he was not God. His death on the cross is effective for you and for me because he is God. He is the creator. So, Jesus claims divinity. Here we go. Sometimes you'll hear skeptics or Jehovah's Witnesses or Arians say something like, well, Jesus never once in, in Scripture claimed to be God. Well, it's true. You can't find in Scripture anywhere where Jesus said, I am God. <laughs> but there's a reason for that. People, uh, well, well, I'll tell you about that reason in just a second here. This is simply not true. Jesus does make the claim to be God. He just doesn't say it as plainly as, as uh, the English language makes it when we make the statement, Jesus said, I am God. So what this does is it reveals the ignorance of the one making the claim. They're ignorant about a couple of things, Jewish culture and literary um, idioms, literary forms. So, two things factor into this discussion. First, in the Jewish culture, it was considered disrespectful to mention the name of God. Uh, the second commandment is, thou shalt not take the name of the Lord thy God in vain. And that had morphed over time among the Jews to mean that any time you want to make reference to the person of God, you can't use the name Yahweh or God or Elohim. You have to, you have to kind of couch it in different language 
in a little softer format. So what they did, secondly, whether in speaking or writing, they would use a literary form known as metonymy. Metonymy. This is where a thing closely associated with the subject was used in place of the direct mention of the subject. For example, instead of saying, the president issued a certain directive, one might say, the White House issued a certain directive. Or one might say in England, instead of saying, uh, the Queen uh, made this great proclamation, uh, one might say, the Crown made the great proclamation. So many times Jesus used the title, Son of Man. It was his favorite title for himself. It was used 81 times in the New Testament. Excuse me. And this is a direct reference to the use of the name for the divine person spoken of by the prophet Daniel. Pardon me. <clears throat> Ate dinner just a few minutes ago. <laughs> Quote, I saw in the night visions, and behold, with the clouds of heaven, there came one like a son of man. Daniel 9.13 This the son of man reference in Daniel is a direct metonymy referring to Yahweh. Also seen in the scripture is Jesus' claim to be Yahweh, the I Am. The same God that appeared to Abraham in the desert in Exodus 3-4. The same God who proved his superiority over all other gods by the ten great plagues he poured out on Egypt, Exodus 9-16. The same God that delivered the Hebrews from slavery, Exodus 20 verse 2, Moses inquired, What is your name? And Yahweh answered him, saying, I am that I am. You tell them, you, you tell the Jews, you tell the Hebrews that the I am has sent you. Wow. When the high priest demanded of Jesus, who are you? Are you the Christ, the Son of God? Jesus answered, I am. The high priest recognized the claim immediately and proclaimed, Blasphemy! He refused to accept that Yahweh had become a man, but Jesus had told the truth. Mark 14, verses 61 and 62. Seven times in his ministry, as reported by the Apostle John, Jesus spoke as plainly as the religious prohibitions and the Hebrew idiom of the day would allow, saying, I am Yahweh. John 6.35, I am the bread of life. And Jesus said unto them, I am the bread of life, he who comes to me shall never hunger, and he who believes in me shall never thirst. John 6.35 John 8.12 I am the light of the world. Then Jesus spoke to them, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. John 8.12 in John 10, verse 9, Jesus says, I am the door. He says, I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. John 10, 9. And then in John 10, 11, Jesus says, I am the good shepherd. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd gives his life for his sheep. John 10, verse 11. And then in John 11, 25-26, Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, 
Though he may die, he shall live, and whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. Do you believe this? John 11, 25 and 26. And then in John 14, 6, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. Quote, Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. John 14, 6. And then in John 15, 5, Jesus says, I am the vine. Quote, I am the vine, you are the branches. He who abides in me, and I in him, bears much fruit. For without me, you can do nothing. John 15, verse 5. You see, Jesus is the great I am. Jesus is Yahweh, come to save and rescue us all from our sin. John 14, 1 through 3. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself, that where I am, there you may be also. And you know what? He is coming back really, really soon. <laughs> when, when he last uh, was on uh, planet Earth, he was at the Mount of Olives, and the disciples were all standing around, and he was teaching them, and he was blessing them, and telling them how much he loved them, and he was going to be with them. And then he started ascending up into the air. And the angels, there were a couple of angels that, that appeared right at that time, and looked around as these disciples were just kind of staring up in the air. I mean, this was Jesus the man that they had lived with for years, that they had known for years, and he just had been crucified and come back from the dead, and now he's ascended bodily into heaven, and they watched him go. And it was like, good night, sure, what in the world is going on here? And they were just astonished. And these angelic beings said, you men of Galilee... Why are you standing around looking up into the sky? The same Jesus that you've seen ascend into the heavens will come back in the same way out of the heavens. And he will. And the book of Revelation talks about it in chapter 19. He's coming back and he's going to touch down on that Mount of Olives. And he is going to establish his millennial kingdom. And you and I who believe in the Lord Jesus Christ are going to be with him when he comes back. Because we will actually have been translated and glorified and given our immortal and eternal bodies a few years prior to that. So, anyway, those are my thoughts on the topic of... Uh, Jesus declaring his divinity. And if you have comments, questions, or prayer requests, you can leave them in the comment section below, or there's a link to my Facebook page. You can leave them there. And I quoted a lot of scripture in this teaching, and so you may want to click on the link to the lesson notes and go through those scripture verses a little more slowly. Now, the next video coming up, is going to be a great one. I don't know what it is. They're all led by the Holy Spirit. I've got more than 600 of them that I've written over time. And, and from time to time, the Holy Spirit is interjected as I was about to publish uh, to YouTube one of those articles. Holy Spirit said, no, no, here's a thought. I want you to write about this thought. And so I'll write up a whole brand new article. And that's the one I published. So I never know. You know, I'm, I'm just the servant of the Lord. I just do what I, I believe that he's leading me to do. 
But if the Lord tarries, if there's not a rapture, if he doesn't uh, let me go home uh, earlier than the rapture, then I will return and publish another YouTube video and uh, try to leave a body of content that will edify you and help you and teach you about Jesus Christ. So until that video, uh, I'm going to be signing off for now. Papa Dale signing off and saying that I'm going to be praying for you, that you will be well and that you will be blessed. Ha, 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 ha.